What's going on guys? One love out to everybody. We got UFC Fight Night, Holloway versus Rodriguez. Breakdown, prediction guys. Before I get started, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel, and subscribe to my Patreon account for all the face-off predictions, prop bets, and combination parlays. Also, I have a PayPal donation button. You guys are free to donate if you want to. It really helps out, helps out the channel, and help me out too. Put a lot of work into these videos, and it's not easy. It's a lot of work, man. And um, I see a lot of people are subscribing, so I appreciate that. But um, be free to donate if you guys want to. It would really help. Okay. Um, the Bellator. Chris Cyborg. Oh, man. <laughs> Chris Cyborg is not a regular fighter in the sense of um, a regular woman fighter. Not disrespecting her. Meaning on uh, power. A lot of women is not going to match the power that she has. Um, Chris Cyborg. Um, Amanda Nunes those women are kind of different in a sense of power wise right so a lot of women gonna, is going to have a hard time hard time with Amanda Nunes and a hard time with Chris Cyborg unless they have some crazy wrestling and crazy take down game but even you know because Amanda Nunes is well rounded and Chris Cyborg is well rounded so that fight was over quickly quickly in the first round man the power man she possessed that freaking knockout one hitter quitter it's hard to find women like that with that kind of power man you may see it shoot i mean not 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 even in boxing you see that much i mean but i mean it's dealing with smaller gloves though but again with boxing gloves you have more weight in it you're gonna hit harder because your hands are more padded up you know with the smaller gloves you still will hit hard but it's not much padding but with boxing gloves you may tend to want to throw a little bit harder because you have wraps and the gloves are bigger right um also um tarot of fortune like i told you guys on my patreon account i went 10 and 1 on my patreon account 10 and 1 and reasons for that is because i had um i didn't have to <laughs> i didn't put um tarot of fortune in my play I mean, I had him actually, you know, on my YouTube, on my main channel. But again, when I see the face-offs, right, sometimes I see something different. And on the face-offs, what I saw is that Tyron Fortune, he looked out of shape. He didn't look in shape for that fight at all, right? And he was and he was overweight. He was, he was weighed more than he usually weighed. And Vassal came in there very lean out you can tell in his body like he was more in shape right even vassal was taking him down <laughs> so tara fortune has the, the um the wrestling advantage but vassal was taking him down and all wrestling it mostly it was more the jujitsu most of the scrambling and their most of the um the reversals is what gave tara fortune problem because he could get the fight down but he can't hold it there though because he get reversed so it's mostly the, the bjj right but like i said Tyrone Fortune will drop the ball and he did. So like I said, on my Patreon account on my face off plays, what I saw on the face off, I didn't like Fortune. So I put Lintel Vascular for the win. So I had all ten fights coming in. The only fight that I missed obviously was the first one. And what I told you guys about fights with high odds, Sebi dropped the ball. See? Because he's experienced. I think I mentioned that Hughes was a more experienced guy, which I did mention that, right? So Again, you know, you have, you have guys like Sebi, yeah, he's very athletic, he's an Olympian wrestler, and, you know, he makes good videos for exercising and stuff like that, but you're dealing with a sport, a game, if you're not used to playing that game on a consistent basis, you end up losing the fight, even if you're athletic or, or you got a good takedown. If you're not playing in there and have experience, you're not going to win. And that's why Hughes won, because he has a big amateur and look at Sebi, he finished most of his fight real, real quick. And the guys that they're fighting 0 0 and 0 1 coming short of Olympic wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it goes, man. And um, yeah, so that's the only fight. But like I said, the odds in that fight is crazy. So a lot of those fights, you shouldn't even be even playing like that. So basically, yeah, I kind of clear the card if you want to say. But like I said, sign up to the Patreon account because face off predictions. I would make one or two changes if I see something with the guy. And I did see with Fortune, he was out of shape. He didn't look, he looked like he was trying to stack on a lot of weight because he's going to come in there and wrestle. 
but it didn't work out in his favor because he becomes sluggish and he, and he got tired in that fight, right? Um, we're going to knock this out real quick, guys. I'm going to spend too long on this one here. Um, uh, let me knock this out. First fight here, we got Kennedy Nujuku versus Jung. Um, Kennedy here, um, he's going to have a five inch reach, which is freaking massive. Um, he has a wrestling base in him there. Um, he has potential, he's a slow starter, um, slightly kind of green in a way. Um, and he will get into bad situations, but then he will pick it up, you know, late, later on in the round, right? So he'll come back in his second round and start pushing the pace harder. Um, let me see. Um, like he will find his way out of the fights, except for against Paul Craig. He got caught in a submission there. Um, but he's durable though, and he will keep coming forward, keep coming forward. And once he warms up, like I said, he will let it go, man. And he's a tough guy to put away, man. Um, a lot of volume from him, like I said, in the later rounds, and he packed power in his hands, man. Um, his opponent here, Jung. Um, Jung is a well-rounded guy, man. Um, very experienced guy. He's durable too, can take a hit. Um, we look to take you down. Um, has heavy punches. Um, will work off his jab. Um, both guys pack power. And um, I believe he's been only submitted one time. And he will look to also arrest you down to the ground too. Um, let me see. Jung would slow down in the fight though. So Ken starts slow and Jung slows down. But when Ken starts slow, he picks it up in the later rounds. Jung slows down in the later rounds, right? And both guys are, are, are kind of durable here. Um, the only thing I like, I like about Ken here is that Ken is durable and he picks up in the later rounds and he can take a hit, man, and keep coming, man. Jung will get hurt in the foot. And like we saw when he fought, um, he went to a draw with Sam Avi. He was getting tagged in that fight. Against William Knight, he uses um, BJJ, his wrestling. Most of wrestling using a fight against William Knight. He can take on Ken, but what I see from Ken, Ken will work back up to his foot. Right? So as long as he doesn't get submitted, like with Paul Craig. But we see against um, Marcus he was getting taken down and he got back up to his foot. And just the fights he's been in the Carlos, see he, he this guy hangs in there, man, and he would take, he would get a hit, but he just keep going forward, going forward. And when he throws, that was heavy, man. So the guy I'm going with here is, is, is Ken. And I'm not confident in this one because he can go either way. And Jung is a very experienced guy, but I don't feel he's as durable as Ken. And that's going to be the point in this fight where Ken can pick up a win, in my opinion. But again, I could be wrong now, okay? So, play, you know, play at your own um, caution. So be very cautious of this one. I say Ken by decision, guys, and I'm, I'm not confident. And this is an even fight for me even Steven so Ken by decision next fight here we got Marty Casey versus Rafael Alves um, the Casey here is a skilled fighter man um, he can get taken down and controlled on the ground but he's durable though and he can get submitted um, the Casey kind of remind me of uh, if you guys remember Yves Edwards from back in the days he's a skilled fighter and everything like that but you know he would drop the ball though right um, Fize was taking him down and Fiza is more of a kickboxer. And he was taking him down in that fight. Um, the case is going to have the 2 inch of height and the 5 inch of reach, which is massive in this fight, man. It's going to be massive reach and height, man. Um, his opponent here, Alves, is a black belt Muay Thai, black belt BJJ. Experienced guy, he's well rounded, skill. Um, he's a heavy striker, too. Quick, aggressive, very athletic guy, man. Um, we'll look for the submission. Um, loss to Damir, but a loss to Damir is not a bad loss, man. The guy's 3 to 1, and Damir is a very good fighter. So, like I said, certain guys you lose to, it's fine. If you lose to Khabib, that's fine, man. Because Khabib is a very skilled fighter, and his wrestling is elite. And if he gets you down there and holds you down, it's difficult, right? Um, let me see. Um, the only thing about Rafael here, man, is that very aggressive and he throws everything with power and the thing is that he will come out there and burst and then burst up a lot of energy and then he slows down man and when he slows down he's just not really doing much and you can take him down and he just lay on his back for the whole round he will look for submissions though but i believe the guillotine is more his submission there right um uh, like i said you get taken down um 
Um, he will unleash strikes. He's powerful, but slow down. You know, and he slows down. You know, he just doesn't do much. And when he throws his kicks and punches, he misses. You know, so he's a guy where he doesn't really pace himself well, and he's like a, he's kind of like a sprinter. You know what I mean? He's a sprinter. Not much first round finishes though, a couple, but it seems like, you know, if he, he doesn't pace himself well. I mean, from what I'm seeing. And I guess these experienced guys, you know, if they pace himself, if you go in there and then just throw everything 100%, you know, it's not going to work in his favor. Um, I feel the Kieske here could probably hold a better pace and keep this fight at the range that he wants to keep it because of his reach advantage. But this is the next one that I'm not confident in either because the Kieske will drop the ball. And Rafael is a, is a very... A very athletic guy and he can look for submissions and the kids he can get submitted so this is a fight where it's a toss up to me man and I said this is an even one guys the next even fight so I have the kids give by decision but I'm not confident in this one just because of the pace and Alvarez burns himself out and if the fight keep going I believe Kiske could use the reach and then Alvarez would slow down you know and then that's where the kids could pick up a winder but again not confident uh, the Kiske by decision, guys. Next fight here. We have um, Courtney Casey versus Liana Jojo. So next one here, man. Um, Courtney Casey here, man. Um, he's going to have the three inch of height, five inch of reach, which is a massive again, man. Five inch of reach is a freaking a lot. She's well-rounded experience. Um... But she can get put in bad situations, and her fight IQ is not that great. Like what we saw from Tower of Fortune, doesn't have a good fight IQ. His corner told him, stay out of the clinch, stay out of the clinch, because the wrestling wasn't working for him. He was beating Lintel on the outside. He was beating him with, with, with strikes, and he kept on clinching, clinching. And each time he clinched, he gets reversed. That's why he lost that fight, because he didn't listen to his corner. He wanted to stay in the clinching range and that wasn't working for him it was the opposite the striking was working for him so if he kept that fight long he probably would have won the fight but eh, it is what it is as I said fight IQ plays a big part in, and you, you make game plans you gotta stick to it and a uh, matter of fact if the game plan doesn't work because he was supposed to go in and wrestle if you see the game plan not working in the first round and you get reversed and you see your striking is working time to switch and then you go striking but the corner was telling him but then he didn't listen so, uh, like I said, fight IQ here by Casey, not that great. Um, she can't get submitted, um, but she hits heavy, though. And when she lets go, it's effective. If she let her hands go, like I see in certain fights, she can hit, man. She, she can box. Kind of similar to that Amanda Nunes and kind of Cyborg. Not at that level of power, but it's close. It's, sim it's almost there, close. So when 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 she, when she when she let her hands go, man, it, it, it flies, man, and she packed power in it, right? Her opponent, her... Lena or Jojo. Um, Jojo um, head doesn't really move center line at all. Head kind of straight up. Uh, striking kind of stiff, kind of predictable the movement. At times can be flat footed. She usually ducks her head down and then throw over hands. Um, her strength is her submission, which is just arm bars, which I have a couple of wins by arm bars only, really. Um, from what I see, like I said, guys, I'm not here to disrespect any fighter. She has a lot of hole in her game, man. Like her striking got holes, her chin is high, head don't move center line. She went to throw a punch, she should duck her head down. You know what I'm saying? Her, her takedown game is not that good either. She she will go for takedown and get stuffed. Mostly she just go off her back for for arm bar, right? But like I said, Casey can get submitted. I, I believe Casey is a either a brumble or a black belt, but like I said, Casey IQ is not good, so this is a fight where for me is an even fight. Um she looks to want to counter strike, but then it's like her head don't move. So when she try to counter, it's like you, you can catch her first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because her head is there. So um, it's a fight where I'm not confident in, guys. I just feel Jojo is it's, it's she's not at that level. I feel Courtney Casey should be able to win this fight, man. In my opinion, but again, the IQ from Casey, man, it's just you just don't know. I mean. If Jojo come in there and then Casey go take her down and then Jojo throw up an armbar and catch her, then the game is over. Casey got caught with an armbar. 
which I said Casey got submitted a couple of times, but I believe like two times or something like that. And I think I want to say it's by armbar. I could be wrong about that though. I think it's by armbar. Uh, I know it's like two times or, or so. She got submitted two times. That's the only thing she got submitted two times. Like I said, her striking, when she let her hands go, she's she's lethal. Like she heavy strike, right? Um, it's a very naked choke and um, arm bar. She, she got arm bar one time. That's back in 213 by Pearl Gonzalez. So, like I said, the arm bar from this girl, Jojo, is there because that's her bread and butter. You know what I mean? So, like I said, Jojo is not, I feel is not at that level. But I get an IQ from Casey. If you take her down and then she get caught, then she get caught. But I feel Jojo is not on her level. So I'm, I'm going to go with Courtney Casey here. She got the reach and the height. She should be able to win this fight. I feel Jojo is just, she's not a UFC caliber fighter in my opinion. Not disrespecting anybody. I'm here to break down fights and give my opinion. Could just be my opinion, but... I feel Casey should win this fight. Um, KO, TKO in the second round, guys. And I'm not confident this is an even fight, okay? Casey, um, <laughs> Courtney Casey, second round, KO, TKO. Next fight, we've got Sean Woodson versus Colin Anglin. Um, Woodson here um, is going to have a 5-inch of height and a freaking whopping 8-inch of reach. Damn, that's a lot of freaking reach and height. And the reason for that because he's 6'2", 7-9-inch reach. And he's fighting at 145, dude. Holy crap. Dude, I'm like 6'1", 6'1 one, six one and a half, 6'2", kind of. And going to 145, the lowest weight I've been is probably 1... I think I went up to like 151 or 150. I dropped to. That's the lowest weight I've cut. I probably could make 145. Because if I can hit 150, then I can just five more. <laughs> but that five pounds is probably hell man holy shit that's a lot of fucking weight he's cutting down i don't know what he walks around at though but damn um he fights long he's a technical striker switches stands accurate strikes um he can get backed up though against the cage though and um but he has but he has been working on his state on defense though which i noticed from his last fight here against zalal and you know pushing off the cage and keeping the fight at the range that he wants to keep it at right um his opponent here colin um colin will look for the clinch and the takedowns um he rides his chin freaking high though but he will keep pressure forward pressure forward he's a pressure fight this guy's a pressure fighter but he's hateable that chin is high up but he will grind for takedowns does he have no submission in his pro, but he has submission in his amateur though? He got two, so his submission chances is possible. This guy here is a pressure fighter against Melzik, lost by a knockout. Like I said, his chin is high up there. So in my opinion, I mean, this is a guy that has like mostly all knockouts, I believe, like six by a knockout or something like that. But boots him with that eight inch of freaking reach, the five inch of height. That's freaking massive, dude. I mean. And he, and he knows how to use it. He knows how to use the range. So uh, he should win this fight. But again, the pressure from Colin, if he, if he can keep pressure, 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 and push Wilson against the cage and pepper him up, possibly even take him down, then he could win the fight. So this is a fight that I'm not confident in, guys. And to me, this is uh, close to even. I have Wilson edging it because of that damn hide and reach. There's no way that freaking hide and reach he should lose that fight. And he knows how to use it. It's not like he doesn't know how to use a reach and height. It's not like um <laughs> that fight tonight. What's that fight tonight? It was um <laughs> I think it was Loretta versus um Loretta versus what's her freaking name? Um Turner. <laughs> Turner has a seven inch reach, but she doesn't know how to use it. Would she know how to use it? So he should win this fight, but again. MMA, anything is possible. You can take down, you can put an opponent against the cage and just win off of cage control and have him against the cage. So there you go. And he just pepper him up with knees and pull off the wind like that and then you possibly even get a takedown. But I like Woodson though. I'm going to say Woodson by decision, but I'm not confident. All right. Next fight here, guys. We got Cynthia Covello versus Angela Lee. Um, <sighs> Covello here, man. Um, She's well-rounded to a certain extent. But she's not using her grappling like she used to anymore. You know, she, she used to dive for double single leg and get the back real quick and submit you. You know what I'm saying? She would use the striking to set up her takedowns and just grind, grind, grind. But she's not doing that no more. Um, 
Let me see here. Um, let me see. Uh, she she seems to have a, a tough fight. Um, she, she seems to have a tough time getting the fight to the ground now. And um, um, and then she seems to break. Depending on who she fighting to, she fighting the girls that are peppering up, like Caitlin Chukagan or Jessica Andrade. If she find those girls and they're hitting her with shots, hitting her with shots, and she find that you know she can't take them down, she gets frustrated and she break under pressure. So that's a mental thing I'm noticing there. Um, like I said, she's not she's not doing what she usually do. Like in all her fights here against Amanda Cooper, Per Gonzalez, even against uh, Paulina Batello. You know what I'm saying? She, 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 uh, she's not doing that. But I think that uh, the thing about Cynthia is that she can pull it off against these these fighters here because, because the ground game is kind of weak in a sense. Well, Pro Gazelle doesn't have a weak ground game, but she, if she can get you real quickly and then pre and put a pressure on you and consistently put you against a cage and then the mindset is like, okay, I can get you against a cage, I can hold you in this position, I can I can at least get you down, then her confidence is, is good. If she starts out the fight and she don't get that takedown, then she starts to decline on her mental state. That's that's that is that is that is that is what I noticed. And then she's tried to rely on her boxing and the hands and it's just the hands not working for her. She don't have no power. She, she not landed any shots, she's just hitting air. Against Angela Lee here, um Angela Lee again like, like this whole entire card is about height and reach she has a 2 inch of height and a 5 inch of reach man she's well rounded striking base she has judo she has taekwondo or karate I think um, we we'll look for the submissions KOTQ she has lost by submission though she has a karate Muay Thai boxing kind of base there right um, what I see from Lee you know a, a lot of her fights here was robbery again Jonah Carl Wood she won the fight Against Lauren Murphy, she actually won a fight. Against Metaphory, uh, I don't know, it was up and down there. But she actually won a fight against Lauren Murphy and Calderwood. Those were two robbers. And Chichenko, she looks good in that fight. So this is a girl that's she, she's gritty, she's tough, she's mentally on. And she's not going to break on a person. No, if Kavala could come in here and then implement the takedowns real quick. And maybe get a submission, maybe get a rear naked choke on her, then it could be different. You know what I mean? So if she's able to kind of stamp that in the beginning, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like come out and like, you know what I'm saying? Like set the fight up where it's in her favor in the beginning. Then you could maybe see something different. And then her confidence will probably go up. But Angela Lee is not an easy girl to, to um, do that to because she's a pretty tough girl, man. And, 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 she, and she's mentally on. And what I see from Covello, it just, it just doesn't look good. Um, she's been submitted one time, so she she had to come out here and like just make a make a stamp. She had to make a statement in the beginning. Made make that statement in the first round. You get a takedown. Then once she get that takedown, you could probably see her do it second and third. But if she doesn't get a takedown in the first round, phew, then you know that Lee's gonna pull the win off here. I'm actually liking Lee for this one, guys. But it's a next fight where I'm not confident in it either. Because if because if Cabello come in here and push the wrestling and do the same thing that she used to do in our earlier fights, she could get she could edge out a victory here. But I'm liking Lee for the win, guys, and I'm gonna say Lee by a decision, and I'm not confident. And it's a close to even. I have Lee edging it slightly, um, but um, I'm not confident. Though. All right. Next fight here, guys. We have um this is the next fight with a freaking crazy reach too. We have Tiago Mas versus Joel Alvarez. Tiago Mas here is well rounded guy, BJJ black belt, heavy with the strikes actually, heavy with leg kicks. Um he fought Makachev there and uh, he lost by submission, but like I said, Makachev is kinda like a um a Zabid. Not Zabid, yeah, like, kinda like Zabid or um Zabid and um <laughs> Zabid and Khabib. More Khabib, I should say, not that Zabit. He's more like a Khabib, right? So to lose to Makachev is not a big thing, man. I mean, like I said, certain guys are just on a different level, and Islam Makachev is on a different level. You know what I'm saying? So to lose to him is not a big deal. You're losing to him, you're actually getting better, right? Guys, 19 and 1. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, um, this, I mean, what I see from Tiago here, I tell you, Mouse, he's just going to get better from this fight. right? He should get better from this fight, right? Um, his opponent here, Joel Alvarez here, um, 
he, he, he fights at the range. He has a little strike in there, but he mostly wants to submit it all. He has 16 by freaking submission. Six inch of height and a seven inch of freaking reach. Again, guys, these guys are long height and reach against these guys, man. Um, his head is straight up, though. Um, he actually loves when you take him down because that's when he can look for submission. He, he, he mostly looks for submissions from off his back. So he doesn't really shoot for takedowns that much. He just likes to pressure you forward with his strikes and then have you take him down, right? Um, his fights don't go to no decision, though, man. So majority of his fights are all first round finishes. And I don't like that. When I see something like that, it just shows me that, you know, if... <sighs> If he doesn't take this fight, if he if the fight go to decision, that means he could lose it. You know what I'm saying? So 16 by submission, he lost. He doesn't really lose that much in the last two fights, but like 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 I said, he it's like he needs a submission to win the fight. And if he can't get a submission on Morris, then he could lose. And I see him, you know, you can take him down, you can control him on the ground. And if you're good enough with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu which Moss is a BJJ black belt. If you're good enough, you can avoid the submissions. Again, Makachev submit Moise, but Makachev is on a completely different level than both of these guys. Right? And that's even ground game and submission. Um, so if Moise stayed on Av Avarez and, and had him on his back, sometimes Avarez would just sit there and try to look for submissions, look for submissions while Moss is hitting him with punches. So this is a fight where, you know, like I said, is majority of his fights are all first round finishes by freaking submission he has some guillotine some triangle chokes he has a variety of different kind of submissions mostly look like his guillot guillotine chokes mostly though right and some triangle choke too um yeah i'm gonna go with moss here for the win guys i feel moss should get better you know what i'm saying he should get better um like i said look at joel Alvarez. he only lost to Dam damir fight went to a decision because he was aware he was on his back. There was parts of that fight where, where, where he was on his back. right? And he was trying to hunt submissions. And if he can't get a submission, he loses. Um, and this fight here against Al, he got KO by spinning heel kick. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Thiago Mas here for the win. Um, I'm going to say Thiago Mas by decision. And yeah, I'm not too confident, guys, because the hide and reach of Avarez and Avarez... You know, he throws well, but Thiago Mas has some nice leg kicks on him, man. So, you could probably break on Avarez's legs. And I believe Mas will even go take on Avarez in this fight. He will back him up and take him down, man. And just pepper him up with shots on the ground. Pull off pull off a decision. It may, I mean, Mas may even probably submit him too. It's a possibility. It's a strong possibility. So, I mean, Mas is a BJ black belt. But like I said, a guy with 16 submission wins, I mean, just... Any, any, anything is possible guys he, he can pull up a fight by submission and win it so but I like most by decision and I'm not confident uh, next fight here guys we have um, Young Dong Sung versus Julia Ars Young Dong Sung here uh, he's a well rounded guy he's heavy handed um, been working on his grown game his grown game usually give him problems he could get taken down but it's look like he's been working at that at um, Team Alpha Male um, in my opinion, I feel like he lost a couple of fights here. Um, Marlon Vera, I feel like he lost that. Um, Cody Statman, felt he lost that too. Um, and against Casey Kenny, I felt he lost that too. So there's a couple of fights here, I felt he lost, man. Um, so those are robbers. <laughs> Um, he throws everything 100% though, man. He looks, he coming here to look to take your head off, man. I mean, this guy's an orthodox too. He throw an orthodox spinning kicks. Um, spinning back kicks and etc but he, he packed power on he's very quick so this 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 guy here is going to have the speed advantage in this fight right um, it's a point here Julio Arso Julio Arso is going to have the 3 inch of reach which is massive and he knows how to use it because he, he also boxes right he has a, also a BJJ black belt um, he's well rounded guy I feel like he's more well rounded than some um, Julio here will keep the pressure on you though man he will keep the pressure on you man forward 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 pressure and he can box man i feel like technicality wise in a boxing i feel he's a better boxer here but it's a speed advantage from song um he moved the bat down to 135 because he was at 145 at one time and he moved back down to 135 which he was fighting at 135 earlier in his career right um he looks strong at 135 though man and um I like Julio Ars for this fight. I feel Julio Ars is just a more well-rounded guy, a more experienced guy here, man. And I feel like his boxing and his technicality and his pace 
is, is better than Song. I feel Song is a little bit, Song is a little wild at times, you know what I'm saying? But he packed power though, and if he connect, he could knock you out, you know what I'm saying? But from what I remember, I don't think, I don't think Ars has been knocked out before. And Ars, like I said, I believe he's a Golden Glove boxer or something like that. Could be wrong about that. Um, Ars has only been submitted. Song has been knocked out, I believe, one or two times. One time. So I'm liking Julio Ars for this fight. And I'm going to say Julio Ars by KOTKO in the second round. And uh, slightly confident, but not too much. But I feel ours could win this fight, but there's a speed advantage though, so it could play a factor, but the skills and everything, I feel Julio Ars has that. So Julio Ars, Kyo, TKO, second round. Next factor, we got Miguel Bize versus Chaos Williams. Miguel here is going to have the 2 inch of height. Um, technical guy is well rounded, um, looks for the openings, BJJ black belt. Um, we'll look for the submission or KO TKO. Um, he will lose use his leg kicks in this fight though. In, sure. He throws a lot of calf kicks. And if you look at William, William kind of can get flat foot that time. And he doesn't really move his legs a lot. So you could see something in this fight where, you know, Miguel tear up William's legs in this fight. Probably could even, you know, take out the leg. And then William probably fall to the ground. Or maybe lose a fight because of that, right? Um, as a point here, Williams, um, Williams is going to have the three inch reach, so Williams got a three inch reach or the longer reach. Very aggressive guy, kind of wild, kind of wild, wild guy, kind of come forward with shots, heavy shots, um, lots of power on him. Very athletic guy, but he has a lot of openings though when he's striking, you know. He kind of wind up a lot on those hook punches, but he darts in though. When he darts in, when he throws his hooks, or when he counters. His chin is usually up in the air, right? Carry a lot of power though, and he carry power until the third round. He carry power all the way through the fight, but his chin is high. And his chin is high when he's charging in, or when he's countering, and usually both ways. When he counter or charging in, he kind of brawls a lot, you know. That's that's what I notice. He brawls a lot. With Miguel, or BZ, I should say. Um, BZ, more... Um, more technical guy, more pop the jab, look for the openings, and if they, if they study footage on Williams, <laughs> which is corner, should study footage. Footage. If they study footage on Williams, they're gonna see that Williams' chin is high up, and if you can time that, definitely can catch him, man. And a guy like Miguel, he should be able to can do that, man, because he's a skilled guy, right? Um, and like like I said, Williams have a couple holes in his game, man, which I, I notice, and like I said. He throws everything with 100% power, but he holds that power down. But then he brawls a lot. And he get flat-footed, but he darts in, like he sprints in a lot. Like he fights in spurts, right? He could catch Miguel and hurt him, it's a possibility. But I'm liking Miguel for this fight, though. And um, I just feel Miguel is a little bit more... He's a little more technical. You know what I mean? Let kind of pace himself a little better. You know, he sees, he can see the openings then, you know, he doesn't wind up, you know, his chin is not high up in the air, doesn't brawl like that, you know. You know what I'm saying? When, you, when you're jumping forward and just throw, 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 hook, 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 yeah, you could land. But then what happens if you don't land? And then, but then what happens if you're darting and, and you get caught? Because your chin is high up, you know what I'm saying? So I'm liking Miguel for the win here. I'm going to say Miguel by KOTKO in the second round, guys. And I'm not confident this one either, but I do have Miguel... You know, on the odds is leading, you know, he's a favorite guy here, but um, I'm still not confident because Williams does carry power and he comes in there and swing wild. When, when you have a guy like that that's swinging wild like that, man, I mean, yeah, you could call, yeah, you could catch him or he could catch you, <laughs> even if it's technical. So, it's still a toss up here, but I like Miguel by KOTQ a second. Next factor, we have Felicia Spencer versus Leah Letson. Felicia Spencer here. Um, she's well-rounded here. I believe she's a BJJ black belt, Taekwondo based here. Um, she's durable. Um, she takes a lot of damage though, even though she's durable. I mean, I mean, you know, somebody can be durable, but it can just take a lot of damage. Um, her thing is her submission, which, you know, she hasn't been using that much. You know what I'm saying? I think the Amanda Nunes fight and the Chris Cyborg, she took a lot of damage in that fight. It just seems like she's not really the same. You know what I mean? So the fights that she used to come in there and take on the people and then, and then submit them, you know, 
she's not really doing that as much maybe because of the caliber of fighters but with Litson here um, Litson has been fought since 2018 and she came off the Tufts um, 28 there um, so we haven't seen her in a while man I mean this, this girl is aggressive uh, striking you know it's so so you know she let the hands go kind of pressure forward kind of push in the clinch there and tie you up and throw a dirty box in and um, against the cage but she takes a lot of damage too man and in her last fight there against um, Storenko she took a lot of damage in that fight and she's she's gonna have a three inch of reach her but she's not active though I mean she's not active man um, it, it's, it's a tough one to pick guys because I mean if you look at Letson, Letson hasn't been fighting since 2018. I mean, I mean, Philly Spencer been fighting, but she's been taking a lot of damage, though. Um, I'm going to go with Spencer for this one, guys, but not confident in this one. This is an even fight. Because what I see from Letson, she will throw the hands, and she does throw heavy, and she does push forward, and she's aggressive. Her ground game, she can get taken down, but because she still will maintain and get back up. So this one is an even. I'm going to say Spencer, though, by submission, first round. Not confident. Ben Rockwell versus Lima. This 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 one could be a bone burner, guys. Uh, Rockwell here again, three inch of height, five inch of reach, massive. He has a takedown, he has a submission. He likes to dirty box a lot. Can I hit you with an uppercut? He will tie up with you. Can I get you an uppercut? Even if he's at long range, the uppercut will come up. Um, but he would drop the ball though at times, or depending on who he's fighting. Um, He's a durable guy, kind of like a zombie guy, man. Just walk forward, take a lot of hits, and keep pushing forward, man. Um, he will gas out, though, depending on who he's fighting, if the person put a lot of pressure on him, right? Um, against Barnett. Barnett was putting pressure on him, but then that's a fight, man. Crazy height and reach over Barnett. It was in no, really too much threat, right? So it's not a lot of pressure on him, right? Um, his opponent here, Lima. Um, Lima is a powerful guy, he's a powerful striker, but... I see him using the ground a lot now because he does have a ground game. I believe he could be a BJJ black belt. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but he can get submitted though, which he's been submitted five times, and he can get taken down. He can take you down, but it depends on who he's fighting though. Um, he, um, he got power though, but he will gas out though. He's going to be the quicker fighter here. And this fighter, guys, he's a quicker fighter. So, I mean, if he can get off on Rockwell, you know, you know, he could hurt him. He has 13 by KO. Um, he lost five by submission though. And Ben been knocked out like four times. So if if Lima could get off with his hands, he could hurt uh, Rotwell, but Lima will guess. Ben will carry carry the fight. Like I said, he's a zombie. I mean, this this guy will be hurt and keep coming forward. It all depends on the caliber of fighters who, who he's fighting. That will give him problem. I don't know if Lima can give him that problem because it's just a gas tank of Lima. And the mental and just the skill level. I feel Ben Rotwell is a more skilled guy. But again, both big guys, man, and anything could happen here. You know, when you're dealing with heavyweights, it doesn't take much. Um, I like Rockwell here. I must say Rockwell by submission in the first round. But to me, it's an even fight, and I'm not confident. This fight can go either way, guys. It's a heads or tail fight because if, if I said Lima coming here and let the hands go, the speed advantage, even throwing leg kicks because Rockwell is stationary, man. He doesn't move his legs much. He just walks towards you, man. Like a, like a zombie, and he like grabs you and uppercuts you, but push up against a cage and look for takedowns and put his body weight on you, and he will submit you. So, like I said, Rotwell by submission in the first round. Main fight on the card here, guys. We have Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. Um, Max Holloway here is going to be the more experienced guy here, man. He's going to be the more well rounded guy, also. Um, boxing. Um, his wrestling, his state on defense, his pace. You know what I'm saying? He's, he has a good pace, timing, his boxing. He just, the guy, the guy is experienced, man. The only person he lost was Alexander Volkanovsky twice, which he had the belt. He lost the belt to Alexander, right? Um, and thus in prior, he lost recently. But he beat Kevin Cutter, which Kevin Cutter is a tough guy to fight, man. But you can see his record here. You know, he been had a big fat winning streak here. We look at Yair Rodriguez though, Yair Rodriguez is not consistent. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's not consistent at all. I mean, last time he fought was 219 against Jeremy Stevens, who first fight was a no contest. Um, and that Jung fight where he was losing, remember, in that fifth round? You know, when he fights these five round fights and he fights prolonged, he doesn't do as well. 
he can't keep that pace because of the way how he fights. Very explosive guy, man. Um, striking at a taekwondo base there. The very unorthodox striking, spinning elbows, spinning back kicks, spinning heel kicks. Like I said, he's a very unorthodox guy. If he catches you with the kicks, he knock you out, but he doesn't hold a good pace though because he's very wild and he throws everything with 100%. And if he doesn't connect and he doesn't knock you out with it, then he end up losing a fight. And we see that when he goes five rounds, right? Um, even against Frankie Edgar, it wasn't a five-round fight, but it's just the experience from Frankie Edgar. You know, he goes in there and, and bursts his gas tank, you know. Like I said, that's the way he fights, though. So he has to fight that. He has to fight in that manner if he wants to win. Um, against Max Holloway, though, man, I think Max Holloway is, just, is, too, of a, is too much of a seasoned fighter, or less, or less Max Holloway get caught with a spinning heel kick or a spinning back kick to the body or a spinning elbow or something unorthodox he get caught with. Then you could see Max get knocked out. But again, I feel Max is just, he carries the pace well. And he will most likely pick apart um, Yair Rodriguez in this fight. It's a five round fight, though. So he can keep Yair on the outside, kind of pepper him up a little bit. Um, even though Yair is going to have the reach advantage, but again, the way how Yair fights, he throws everything 100%. And a lot of kicks, and the kicks is what winning most of his victories. But he uses the hands to set up the kicks, though. But uh, Holloway is just, yeah, I think he's most likely going to be able to see all that. You know, like I said, you know, it happens, you know, in MMA, and anything is possible. So, yeah, 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 could catch him. <laughs> Believe me. You know, you're throwing unorthodox techniques and a technique that you don't see and the technique that you don't know about and you don't see is the one that knock you out. So, Max Holloway could just be there in the middle, just here, like, pace himself, then boom, and lights out happens but I'm, I'm gonna say Max Holloway here by decision and I'm not confident because of Rodriguez an orthodox technique and the way how he throws it he just you, you could get caught by it even though he hasn't been fighting and he's not consistent but you can still get caught you know hey man your chin not meant to get hit man so your face not meant to get hit quick look at the odds here guys see what we're working with Um, all right, let's see here. Um, Dong Jong and Kennedy, perfect. Like what I told you guys, even fight. Remember, guys, I don't look at these odds until now. Even perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. You kind of have Kennedy a slightly not slightly yeah, like an underdog there, but you know, it's like an even fight. Marty Kiski, Rafael Alves. Marty Kiski is 200 or something. I disagree with that. This is, an, this is an even fight, guys. Be careful, because when I see the odds now, I can tell you, Rafael could win the fight. Because Marty Kiski, <laughs> like I said, it's kind of like, in other words, he would carry the fight for a little while, and then he start to fade out. And if Rafael can come in this fight and fight and carry the fight with his power and his takedowns, because Ra Ra uh, Rafael is a very skilled guy and a very technical guy. And if he can carry the fight, it could be similar to when Marty Kiski um, fought his last fight there which was against um, when he fought uh, Fize right it could be similar to Fize fight because Rafael and Fize kind of have that kind of explosive kind of vibe so Marty Case could be in 200 be careful with that one I disagree that's an even fight Courtney Casey and Jojo I disagree. I disagree with this one. Courtney Casey is way too high, and the reasons for that because fat IQ, and she will drop the ball. Nine and nine. She has nine wins and nine losses. Jojo, like I said, doesn't really belong in there, but she can get submissions. She can get an armbar. So with that being said, I do have Casey as favorite, but not at two something though. However, maybe like one fifty or something like that. All right. So I disagree with the odds in this one. Colin Anglin and Woodson. Woodson three hundred and something. I totally disagree with that too, man. Reaching height and he has a massive eight inch reach, but Colin can grind, push, pressure, pressure, pressure. And if he can pass the reach from Woodson and get get past that reach and clinch up with him and maybe take him down and prep him up against the cage, he could pull off a grindy split decision or decision. So I disagree. I do have Woodson winning by you know being the favorite, but Woodson maybe like. 160 150 close fight man the odds is, is not right okay Angela Lee Covello why would I have Covello winning it's a close fight I have Lee winning but you know hey you know what I'm saying is 
I mean, if you look at Leach, you're underdog, so that's a good thing. So I, I don't disagree with the odds in here. It's, a, it's an even fight. It could get even or more closer, you know, in the day of the fight, okay? So I don't disagree on this one, but I do have Lee winning, and I feel, you know, what I see from Covillo lately, it just, has, it just doesn't look good. So, you know, they're probably giving her a favorite because they feel like she could come in and get a win and maybe get a submission. It's possible. But I feel, I feel Lee's just striking wise and even grown. I feel like she's a, she may be a little edge better. Um, Alvarez and Morris. Morris is 200 and something. Um, so next fight where I slightly disagree too. I feel Morris is too high, man. This guy just, why are they making this guy so high of a favorite, man? I mean, Morris, I, I like him to win the fight, but man, not a 200 and something. Maybe like 160, 150, maybe 170. Because Alvarez has his submissions and, and he can find submissions. And Moore has been submitted, even though it's by Makachev. And, and, and there's nothing wrong about getting submitted by um, Habib or Makachev because those guys are very experienced. But, you know, he I feel it's just too high because, and then the reach advantage from Joel. Massive reach advantage, massive height. You know what I mean? I mean, even though Morris should come in this fight and, and perform better, because when you lose to guys like Habib and Makachev and those guys that put pressure on you, you learn from that, or you should learn from it. I disagree with the odds, guys. I feel the odds too high. I do have Morris winning, and but not at 260. Be careful with this one. Kiers Williams and Beasley. Beasley 150, 148 for the cross. In a kind of way, I don't really disagree because it's kind of close to even, and, and, and Miguel is kind of leading a little bit. So I don't disagree with the odds on that one, but still be careful because Williams will come in there and swing wild, man, and catch him. It's a possibility. Brawling kind of style, you just never know. Damn, Young Dong is favorite and, and Horace is underdog? Really? Wow. Um, I have Horace winning. Um, but um, yeah, I just feel Horace is a better fighter. So that's great because, <laughs> because he's an underdog. Like, like I said, guys, I don't look at these odds. So he's an underdog. So hey, yes, I mean, that's fine with that. But I like Arsto, but again, hey, they, if they see Dong winning, then hey. But it's a close fight still. So, but I'm but I'm but I'm liking ours. Felicia Spencer, 300 and something, and, and Linson, no. For what I see from Spencer lately, she shouldn't be so high. And what I see from Litson, she hasn't been fighting at all. But what I see from her last fight, she don't really look too bad, but she does take a lot of damage. Um I, this fight to me is an even fight, man. Because what I see from Spencer, I just I'm just not impressed with her performance lately. So I disagree with the odds in here, guys. This is way too high, man. Be careful with this one. Totally disagree. Rockwell and Rogero. Rockwell 170 straight across, 158. Um, I really don't really disagree with this, but you know, heavyweight guys, be careful. You know, it's, it's kind of very close to even fight here. I would more say even because <laughs> it's just power advantage. You know, both guys hit heavy. You just you just never know. But I do like Rockwell, but be careful. Damn, Max Holloway is 700, 600. I disagree with that, man. No, man, because Jero Rodriguez, I mean, he's still a good fighter. He just don't really carry the pace and does get wild at times, does get kind of sloppy. And then Max Holloway, you know, was a champion, lost, lost a belt, and proves that he can still hold his own off his last win against Cotter. So I think the odds too high on him, though, man. He could be a little bit closer, maybe 200, 300, maybe, if you want to go so high. So when I see this, be careful. Because Yair Rodriguez come in here and hit him with something. Yair can kick, man. And his kicks are all over the place, man. If he connects with something, man, and he can because he does it a lot, he'd be lights out. So be careful with this one. I believe Max I don't think Max Holloway... I mean, he could take a hit, though, man. But, man, the techniques that you don't see coming, those are the ones that lay you out flat. So your face ain't meant to get hit, man. So, I mean, hey, man. He's never been finished though, but like I said, yeah, year is an orthodox. It was a lot of unorthodox techniques. So it's a risky one here, guys. I, I disagree with the odds on that one. And um yeah. The fact that I disagree with is um Marty Kiski and Alvarez disagree. Courtney Casey and Jojo totally disagree. Colin Alvin and Woodson disagree. Um I like Lee for the win, but you got Carvello, but it's a close fight. Um Morris and Avers, I disagree. Um, Miguel and Williams, that's fine. Ours and Sangdong, I like ours, but Sangdong favorite, but still a close fight. Spencer and Litson, disagree. Rockwell and Marcus, 
kind of disagree, but I could see Ben Rock will win in that, but still be careful. And Holloway and Yaria do I do guess? I, yeah, I feel Holloway is too high, but Holloway should win, but be careful with it, man. So, yep, it's a lot of fights in here that's kind of strange. The odds are very strange, so be careful with it. Like I said, guys, check out my Patreon account because I'm going to watch the face-offs and put the face-off plays up there. Um, on my donation, PayPal is there. You can leave something in the donation bin. Um, hit the thumbs up button, get these videos out, subscribe to the channel as much as you can. Try to get this channel out. Like I said, guys, I'm not getting paid by YouTube because my channel is not monetized. God just open up the channel, so nothing is going on there. So the more support is better. And I uh, try to make the best videos as I can and put it out, you know, at a more reasonable time, you know. Um, so, yeah, guys, so um, that's about it. Um, you guys keep on kicking. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. One love out to everybody. And um, you guys keep on kicking, man. Oh,